Okay, here we go. Welcome, uh, everybody, to this new uh, live stream of uh, Living uh, Media. And uh, today we are extremely, extremely uh, excited uh, because we have a special guest with us, uh, expert in uh, British uh, monarchy and uh, everything related to uh, royal uh, life. And let me introduce you to my good friend, Thomas. <laughs> Hello, Thomas. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Joseph. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. My pleasure. So thank you for joining us in this uh, initiative that, uh, you know, we are uh, also trying to uh, uh, play our part uh, in this uh, crisis. And uh, we are meeting this uh, fantastic uh, expert uh, in, uh, in very specific fields to get their take on, uh, uh, you know, a little bit what's going on, of course, right now, but especially uh, how can we move uh, forward? Uh, fortunately, we are at the point now where uh, governments uh, here in America and around the world are starting. Are, are, you know, they, they started talking about the end of the the tunnel. Like, uh, uh, how can we get uh, ourselves out of this uh, uh, situation? So, uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, our viewers are uh, already familiar uh, with, uh, with you because we talk about your book. But here we, and that was a great uh, initiative that you can talk briefly about, uh, uh, the life of uh, Queen uh, Lilibet, yeah, Queen Lilibet. And, yes. uh, and, uh, but here, like, you are here uh, today as an expert on uh, 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 royal uh, history and uh, many topics related to uh, uh, royal uh, uh, life, uh, not only uh, British, but around the world. Yes, yes. So please, uh, uh, tell us a little bit uh, about uh, what you liked to uh, work on uh, your uh, passion. Well, uh, my name is Thomas Mace Archer Mills, and as your lovely audience knows, I am the founder and director of the British Monarchist Society and Foundation. And uh, we've been working on a lot of projects at this time uh, because we have to work from home. We're not mm -hmm. out in the field. We're not in front of the palace. We're not reporting as we used to. And for my organization and our membership, it is uh, increasingly difficult because all of the businesses that are linked not only with us, but to the royal family, such as royal warrant holders, news broadcasters, everybody is suffering. But mm -hmm. it's how we take this time and use it to our benefit. So we're really working on a new endeavor, which is Crown and Country Radio. Mm -hmm. uh, we are continuing to work on Crown and Country Magazine. But we're also coming up with new ways to reach people, such as a mm -hmm. YouTube television channel. Mm -hmm. And as we're making this jump from uh, being together to actually social distancing. I don't like the term social distancing. Mm -hmm. I like to call it physical distancing because yeah. we are social creatures. We're just physically distancing ourselves from one mm -hmm. another. Yeah. Uh, we have to find ways that we can actually uh, continue to work and strive to be our best in the current climate. And that for us is reaching our membership base. Mm. It's reaching those people that we have working relationships with, uh, newscasters, news channels, royal warrant holders, uh, government personnel, MPs, uh, members in the House of Lords that are our patrons. So what my organization is trying to do is, is carry on as normal and have that sort of British ethos of keep calm and carry on. But it's very difficult to do at certain times, as, mm. as we all very well know. Yeah, well, uh, definitely. But uh, I'm glad to, to hear that, uh, you know, you were able to uh, keep operations uh, uh, running uh, because the insights that you offer are uh, extremely, extremely uh, interesting. And uh, here we can see that in terms of your uh, personal uh, expertise, uh, it's been uh, years uh, that you uh, focus on uh, the British uh, monarchy. Uh, but the, uh, in general, the uh, other um, uh, monarchies around uh, around Europe. Can, can you uh, yes. tell us a little bit uh, more about? Uh, it, it, I think it's uh, fifteen years at least. Uh, yes, yes, it is covering this. Okay, yeah. Uh, 
uh, please share with us because it's uh, it's uh, it's extremely uh, not only fancy, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's also uh, um, a nice connection between the two uh, shores of uh, of the Atlantic Ocean uh, to be reminded of uh, what is an imp- a key heritage for for the United States. Yes, it, that's a very good point. And I don't know where the last 15 years have gone. Uh, we're coming up to a 10-year anniversary with the British Monarchist Society, formerly, uh, in mm-hmm. the year of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee in 2022. Mm-hmm. But uh, my my expertise actually goes back to well before I was in university and matriculated into the world as a uh, we all know my mother and her family are all British, British, Irish in origin. And uh, my father was a first generation Italian American. And when his parents came to the United States, there was still a monarchy there in Italy. So monarchy is something that I've always been very interested in. And especially growing up in upstate New York in Lake George, uh, which was named after King George II, I've taken that British history and really wanted to uh, share that with people because most people don't understand just how in-depth British culture is in the underlying, uh, let's just say, provenance of America and how it came to be the United States of America. Mm -hmm. So we work and I've worked tirelessly through uh, countless efforts to to bring this to people. And in this current atmosphere, we're expanding on that with the British Monarchist Society as well, issuing a new series, which is an anthology of the Battle of Lake George, the Battle Mm. for Lake George. Uh, Everything that had to deal with not only the Seven Years' War, but the original skirmish, which is known as the French and Indian War here in the United States. Yes. So uh, it's very interesting to look at the parallels between the Seven Years' War, the French and Indian War, and just at that time, how there weren't any Americans. It was a British territory. It was the British colonies. It was British North America. Everyone in the United States was, at that time, a colonial subject of the crown. Hmm. So uh, these are things I think that a lot of people forget because a lot of Americans, yeah, it's America, the best country ever. We're free people. And they try to distance themselves from the British. And we look in Hollywood Mm. and see what they do when they try to make the British to be the bad people, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, which is really funny because the United States is built off the United Kingdom of Great Britain. So (laughs) we're more than just brothers. We are ancestors. We are Uh very well related through Mm -hmm. not only documents like the Magna Carta and the Bill of Rights, but even to the transatlantic relationship that's enjoyed today. Yeah. Not only that, I think that because, of course, uh, that's that's what happens uh, um, with uh, history is that, of course, e- the narration of e- history gets uh, compressed. Right. Uh, it's yes, inevitable. of course. But if you think about the actual breakdown of the years that went by, I, I always like to make this point as I'm a proud, I'm proud to be uh, American, uh, that I'm, I'm, uh, I had the privilege of growing up in Europe and then coming back. But um, I was really uh, 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 sh- shocked when I learned that th- throughout the seven years of uh, war, uh, uh, for uh, American independence, thirty percent of Americans remain loyal to the crown. Uh, today, if you turn that in political data, right, uh, like a vote, uh, you have thirty percent of people who would vote for the for the <laughs> for the for the King of England, right? Yes, it, it's yes. one third of the country. <laughs> one third. That, that is a huge party very likely <laughs> to elect a president, you know? Yes. And, and that yes. was, that's what I like to repeat, is throughout the duration of the war. So when the war ended and the independence was uh, recognized or, or granted or obtained, uh, politically speaking, that the 70% of Americans had to deal with that 30%. And uh, it couldn't be violent because these were Americans. So with uh, diplomacy, compromises, they had to basically find a way to live uh, together. Some of them were 
executed, of course, <laughs> as well. Yes, tarred and but, uh, <laughs> banished to Canada. <laughs> so. Yeah, but you know, but yeah. also, also, you know, uh, they had to find a way to uh, to live together. So, uh, and that's something that uh, you know, the uh, you know, those people they you know, then they went back to work in offices, uh, businesses, and uh, actually was a key aspect in uh, keeping the trade with England, which was fundamental. Uh, yes. for the growth yes. of these of these of this country the United States so that is always a fascinating aspect uh that of course Hollywood just decided to you know look the other way <laughs> yes yes well and it's funny because it wasn't just the British crown in mm -hmm. what was British North America you had the French crown you mm -hmm. had the Spanish uh, even the Portuguese mm -hmm. and when we look at my expertise of course it is the British royal family the British monarchy first and foremost but I have been on countless programs discussing the Dutch monarchy because mm -hmm. I, I was lucky enough to actually do some you university studies in Holland. Mm -hmm. And um, I've worked with fantastic members of different royal families, such as mm -hmm. the Spanish royal family, the Swedish royal family, of course, the British royal family. You'll find some pictures of me with mm -hmm. Doña Sofia, the Queen of, of Spain, uh, Crown Princess Victoria of Sweden, as I've mentioned, uh, Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge. I, I'm even a current... Uh, consultant to the princely house of uh, Prince Mario Max, who you've heard me speak about several times, and his yes. father, who uh, are just family, really. They, they are such a wonderful household. Mm -hmm. uh, the princely house of schomburg lippa and Prince Valdemar, uh, he is in line for the British throne. Uh, it, it's really just fantastic, their history. Mm -hmm. They're related to the Danish royal family, going back to the 900s, the... Uh, they're related to everyone, really. <laughs> so uh, I'm never surprised when Prince Max phones me and says, oh, I was just with uh, Prince Albert of Monaco. This was pre-COVID-19. Uh -huh. And all of these people. And he says, you know, I have some questions for you. I should know this. I do know this. But as time changed, so do protocol. And that is my area of expertise. So sure. he and his family, we talk quite a bit about their engagements and how we are constantly updating protocols to bring princely houses and royal families well into the 21st century. And mm. dare I say that most of the change actually starts with the heads of these royal homes, such as mm. the British royal family. Change always starts with the queen because she is the head of the family. Sure. And if she wants the change, the change comes. Hmm. And this is something that we look at, uh, which is very important because as times change and society changes and we as people change, the institution needs to change to stay relevant. And this is something that the queen and heads of royal families around the world are very well aware of. They must always change to not only adapt to, but also represent the societies of which they are the head in the best possible way. And that is modernizing and updating themselves for the current centuries. Yeah, uh, in this, uh, you know, uh, absolutely. I uh, I think, uh, you know, what you're stressing out, it's, uh, it's absolutely important. I was really impressed by the, the message of the Queen. Uh, you know, when uh, when uh, when England was really uh, deeply falling into this uh, crisis, um, because you really don't get to see here, especially in America. In Canada, I know it's different. I, I, I go to Canada pretty often. It, of course, over there is different, mm -hmm. but you don't get to see, you know, uh, uh, you know, the Queen uh, uh, speaking, uh, or you know, in uh, uh, in general. So mm -hmm. to so just to you know see her uh and uh, with you know uh, with her own awards uh the way that um you you could tell that you know other other you know political leaders of course they 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 you know they're coached right <laughs> it's like you know this is how you have, yeah. you have to you know hold your hands and 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 and, and you know uh, uh, you know your posture has to be there which words you have to address instead queen elizabeth was really um, was really uh, uh, heartwarming, you know. And she was like, her, you know, her voice was uh, straight, but also 
concerned. You you could you could feel you know that that she was feeling it you know for for the people, and that's it's yes. something that you can only get from a, from a monarch. You know, there is no way around it. You know, uh, that kind yes. of caliber. And in uh, and in in being you know mentioning also her you know personal life I I really was was touching when when she mentioned her time during World War Two with her sister uh, with war, you know, during World War One with with her sister um, the World in, War Two World yeah. War Two World War Two uh, Princess Margaret yes it, it was really uh, you know wow it was a wow moment you know <laughs> um, yeah. so I don't know you know what what is your take about that. But well, this it was, is it was interesting. Uh, it, well, it was so interesting because I came to America for consultancy mm-hmm. in February, and Virgin cancelled the flights. They grounded them. <laughs> My consultancy was cancelled. <laughs> so um, I'm here. I'm I'm stuck here. So it was really quite something for me to see that almost every news channel carried the Queen's speech. And this is someone, as you said, who doesn't need coaching. She is the one who is the coach. She is the <laughs> boss. <Definitely>. So, <laughs> and uh, when you look at several of the networks in the United States, that I, I was absolutely amazed because we had some left-leaning channels such as MSNBC, CNN, mm-hmm. yeah. and some of the shows that are on those channels, they give a what for to the right, to the conservatives, and of course to President Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And when one of the shows actually said, hey, wait a minute here, let's look at the Queen, and they refer to her as the Queen of England, which she's the Queen of the United Kingdom and 15 other countries around the world, as well as head of the Commonwealth of 53 individual states. Mm -hmm. So this is not someone who's speaking for one country. She stands mm. in front of sixteen different flags at once. So, oh wow, for, that, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, that that already yeah. you know gives you know takes it to yeah. a whole different level. <laughs> yeah, this is a woman who, in two years' time, will have been seventy years on the throne, seventy years in her job. She is the most senior statesman in the world. So mm. when she speaks. The world listens. And what I noticed, which was very different uh, in the United States, is that Americans were listening to her. She was providing something that their own leadership in the United States were not providing. There were no words of comfort from President Trump. There was no, I am with you. I know what it's like to experience this sort of disruption. I've lived and I served in World War II. Uh, and this is something that is is very different. And I spoke about it in the household that I'm in, saying it's really quite something that the Americans are listening to the Queen. They are learning from her. They are actually applying the lessons that she actually conveyed in her COVID-19 speech. So when we look at these other shows that were uh, having an interview with Her Majesty's Britannic Ambassador to the United States and saying, yes, excuse me, but Miss Ambassador, can we borrow your queen maybe for a year or two? That struck me as significant and profound because for a country that objected to the king uh, with a majority and broke free uh, with the American Revolution or the War of Colonial Aggression, as some might put it, to now say, can we borrow your monarch? Can we borrow the queen as head of state for a year or two? Because this is not working for us. I think that is profound that a national television program on a national news network would actually go as far as to say something like that. And it wasn't a little joke or a snide remark. This was genuine. People yes. in America love the Queen. They want the Queen. And I have so many people that reach out to me and say, Thomas, when you come back to the United States, as you do a couple times a year, can you bring her with us? Um, <laughs> the, the, the White House might not be as fancy, but I'm sure we can find some money to to fix it up for her. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it's really quite something yeah. that one speech that was not even eight minutes long could change and really infiltrate the Republican minds of America and actually mm-hmm. say, can we borrow her? She knows mm-hmm. a little more than what we have. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that that is, in general, you know, as you said, she, um, uh, she's been ruling 
uh, uh, like not just as you said, not, it's not just about England. It's about uh, all the uh, the countries uh, that are part of the uh, Commonwealth. Uh, so she, she she's been there, she's done it <laughs> for seventeen oh, yeah, years. She's and when she says I served, I, I've served in World War Two. She did. She really did. Yes. So she trained for the ATS. Uh, yes. She changed tires, changes oil. Uh, that's something I think that is not put out enough to show her contribution. She is the only head of state today that not only served in World War II, but actually helped people by doing her job in the ATS. And that's really quite something. But the queen, the queen reigns. That's what she does. And uh, this is, is really something. It's what people aren't understanding, the function of the monarch as the executive and exactly what she and her heir do. And this is also why she is so good at what she does, is because she was trained for the job that she has. Mm. She was born to become mm. this individual and undertake these duties. And being a sovereign is very different than being an elected politician who is head of state for four or eight years, or five or ten or however many such as in the United Kingdom. This is a job that you are trained for from birth. And mm. it comes with the experiences of not only you as an individual, but your parent and your family, because your family have had this position for hundreds of years. So that knowledge that you're getting in your training from the day of your birth to the day that you take the throne in the position as head of state is unparalleled. Mm. It is a quality that can never be matched by any president mm. in the world. That is a fascinating take <laughs> really it's funny. true that is I, I guess that for many americans uh you know this is not even something that you are brought to think about you know uh because mm. you know when we talk about you know in general our politicians what is that we stress out that they are incompetent <laughs> you know it's like how they did they, you know how did they get there you know in the first okay we get it you know they got elected how they got elected you know it's like how is exactly. that possible Instead, exactly. compared to somebody who had that kind of training since we value meritocracy so much in america you know it's like well <laughs> this really leads to some interesting interesting thoughts and uh thank you for uh for making that point i think it's very uh fascinating um and you know um, in, in times of, you know, women empowerment, <laughs> yeah. uh, that would yes. be the ultimate me too. You know, it would yeah. be, <laughs> okay, let's bring her back. <laughs> yeah. And I love it when everyone's like, oh, well, Beyonce, I'm the queen and Britney, I'm the queen. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. There's only a minute. one there queen. There is an actual queen. There's here. one queen. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And I'm sorry, but uh, little girls, she is the boss. And yeah. if we're looking for a strong female role model, it's yeah. amazing how much power that the queen wields as the crown. And that power shouldn't be known for the power she has, mm -hmm. but the power she denies others to usurp the sovereignty of the United Kingdom. Yeah. And this is what a strong <laughs> female role model looks like. You know, that's how it, it, it is demised, you know, by the fact that here is 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 gossip. You know, mm. it, it's uh, not, not just gossip, but it's, you know, it's it's scandalous. You know, we hear about the crown yes. only when there is some kind of scandal or blah, blah, blah. So we mm -hmm. don't get anything of the 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 stature of uh, mm. of a country ruler you know uh, well, and i'm glad that you said the crown because the crown the, the netflix series has taken america by storm and i have a very big problem with the crown i no longer watch it for mm. historic accuracy mm. uh, i watch it for entertainment because i like the sets i know some of the interiors uh yeah. where it has been shot but one thing i want to want to stress to the listenership here is that nobody knows what is actually said the crown as netflix has written it that's what it is it is creative writing with fantastic license to embellish and create drama. Yeah. And so many things that the Queen says, whether it's Olivia Colman or her predecessor in the role, uh. are not right. The Queen would never say that. And 
One thing that most people don't know is that the crown is written and produced by Republicans, not in the American sense, but the British sense. They don't care for the monarchy. So <laughs> the next time you watch the crown, and I'm going to ruin this for a lot of your viewers, and I apologize, <laughs> but I don't. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, <laughs> Look at how they mold the queen into putting her in this sort of realm where I don't care. Mm. Well, I had to shed a tear because when I went to the coal mine at Aberfam, you know, I couldn't muster a tear in these sorts of things. The queen is a very feeling woman. Mm. And she shows emotion a lot. And I think one of the biggest mistakes is that the public say, oh, well, she's too stoic. She's too stone faced. We have seen her express emotion since mm. the day she was born. And um, they make her in that series to be almost not human, mm. something that is anti social mm. and anti forward thinking. When all of the change, as I've said, it's starts it's with the her. fantasy is the fantasy and the imaginary that is built, you know, in uh, in, yes. in you, uh, you meaning you who have done the show, right? Uh, yes. But you know, this is this is a topic that you know <laughs> uh, we can go down this rabbit hole in another <laughs> video. But let's just say, let's just say <laughs> that you know uh, Hollywood is the. Uh, 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 world responsible for uh, portraying uh, cowboys as tall white men when <laughs> 70% of cowboys were Mexicans. Uh, yes. You know? <laughs> yes. Uh, that's why El all Guapo. the thing related to cowboys is in Spanish, starting from uh, Lazo. You know, it's like, why it's Lazo? Well, Lazo, it's is is and you have a lasso. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's so, where it comes or, from. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and and that's why you know there is this. A fundamental guilt by Hollywood in trying to uh, push representation um, as much as they can, they can, considering that they are putting. And I don't know if that's the crown, but uh, or it was some uh, his, uh, like a, in a historic reenactment of uh, uh, something in the Middle Age, where one of the assistant of the counselor of the queen or, or the king was uh, was was black. Right. Yes, Which? that was the current representation of Mary Queen of Scots that came out last oh, year. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yes. yeah, that was the current. So, I have my own historical issues with that. Yeah. <laughs> so, and and what is the point? The point is that uh, if because this it's lazy writing and it's uh, it's uh, it's political bias because of course yes. the, the point is not having uh, African American actors. Uh, on screen, of course, th th that is not the point. But there are the point is you are trying to you know um, uh, sh like shoehorn a narrative when without caring about the many incredible stories about uh, the kingdoms in Africa. We want to start yes. with that, or uh, the many uh, the many stories about African Americans in America. M many fascinating stories, but. So you want to give representation? Well, do your homework. Maybe involve <laughs> some historian expert in African American history or African history, which is a glorious yes. history throughout the centuries, and give representation. No, it's like you know, it's a petty, uh, stupid way of trying to look good, right? It's like, oh, see, I'm, you know, we, we're nice, we're nice because. In uh, 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 what's the title of the movie again? Mary Queen of Scots. Mary Queen of Scots. Yeah, yeah. We see, we 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 have representation, and uh, you know, and uh, <laughs> and it's just it's just pointless. It's there is there is no soul in that message. It's just done to please some producers or some blue you know blue check marks on Twitter, but there is no yes. real care. Yes. For 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 that representation, which we all agree there is the need for. I'm I'm here, you know, that I wanna I wanna see more because actually in Europe you get much more content on this. In America, yes. you, you don't yes. get this content. It's like, yeah, you want to give representation, please do it. But yes. respect the source, the source material and and care about the representation you want to portray. Yeah. And but you know, we are two white well, guys talking about this, so <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, but it, 
in the, that's the thing, Joseph. We're, we're two white guys, so they're going to say, well, we're out of touch. But who's actually out of touch when you're looking at historical representations? Mary, Queen of Scots, is a very big offender because they not only had African Americans as close advisors, but they had Asians as well. They had LGBT people. Yeah. Uh, it was a film that politically <laughs> like ticked every PC box. And if you're making a film about that time, they weren't very PC at all. Yeah. So it, it's a way for the current generations to come up believing things because even though there are some historic aspects to what they were filming, a lot of it was make believe and people get confused. They think it's a biopic. They think it's true. Well, that's the way it was. Why is it such an issue? No, it's not the way it was. And it is an issue. Yeah. So uh, as a historian, that's where I feel the fury start on my toes and get to about here before I have yeah. to censor and silence my mouth. <laughs> so. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and, and that's the point, you know, because if we start to, uh, you know, debate about we need a contemporary representation on, uh, uh, like, past history, then what is, like, you think if you're going to have a, an African-American portraying Hamlet, uh, that it's going gonna, it's gonna to make things better? Uh, the point is, we we should we should care about the stories people care about, and if you wanna present, uh, if you wanna support representations, you have to do your homework as anybody else. There are many amazing stories out there, many uh, amazing authors that can give us um, uh, uh, a fair. A genuine, authentic representation of what yes. are the priorities for the communities who want to be represented. When I speak to my uh, black friends, none of them is interested in this. None of them is interested in having, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 like a uh, yeah, in, in something like uh, the you know ha having being represented in a like a movie about you know middle aged in Europe. He's like, who cares? It's not theirs. They don't relate to it, uh, and and they don't like it. It's like, well, you know, I would actually more, you know, I want to see more about this or about that. So that's why it's it's really entitled. It's really entitled saying, oh, you see, this is the representation you want, right? <laughs> mm, no, no, we no, <laughs> no, that's not what we want, really. Uh, uh, Thomas, uh, it's it's fantastic to hear from you these precious uh, intakes in this very challenging time times. So hopefully, uh, uh, people can uh, um, uh, you know uh, uh, take uh, some important uh, information about what we have shared uh, today to look at the future uh, a little bit uh, you know in a brighter way, uh, understanding that it, it, it's not easy. But hopefully, you know we have. Done our part in uh, uh, sharing some some thoughts and uh, inspiring people in uh, uh, you know uh, getting over uh, this and uh, being constructive and positive. Yes, yes, I hope so because that's what we need to be. We need to be positive. We need to stay constructive. And in this time of like I I've said physical distancing, it doesn't mean we need to be antisocial and remove ourselves from our support networks. And I think our physical well-being and our mental health is what really needs to persevere at this time. Absolutely. Okay then. Uh, thanks again, uh, Thomas. Thank and, you. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, um, uh, you will be able to come back to our show very soon. I hope so. Thanks for having me. Thank you <laughs> Thank very you. much.